Daf Yomi Tractate Bava Mitzia, page 39, a hey, top of the page, with the words Natushim, Debal, Korchan, etc. The Gemara explains abandoned property, Natushim, is referred is referring to property that the owner is vacated per force. When it is written, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, unat untashta. Exodus 23.11, that is expropriation by edict of the king of the universe. Forsaken property, ritushim, this is referring to property that the owners vacated of their own volition. As it is written, a mother was forsaken with her sons, Hosea 10.14, indicating that the mother was left with the sons as all the men left. A sage taught with regard to the Brita discussing the case of one who, des- who descends to the property of another, and for all of them the court appraises their work as one would appraise the work of a sharecropper. The Gemara asks, to which property in the Brita is this ruling stated? If we say it is stated with regard to captive's property, now that the Tana stated that he is diligent and he profits, as he may take as much produce as he wishes, it is necessary to say that he can take a share of what he did to enhance the field. Rather, say that it is stated with regard to forsaken property. But isn't it taught the court removes it from his possession? The legal status of the one who labored in the field is not at all similar to that of a sharecropper. Rather say that it is stated with regard to abandoned property. The Gemara asks, in accordance with whose opinion? If we say it is in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis, don't they say the court removes it from his possession? And if it is in accordance with the opinion of Rabban Shimon ben Gamaliel, doesn't he say, I heard, that the legal status of abandoned property is like that of captive's property, and the rights of the one who labored in the field are superior to those of a sharecropper? The Gemara answers according to the opinion of Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, the legal status of that property is in some ways like that of captive's property, but in other ways not like that of captive's property. It is like that of captive's property in that the court does not remove it from his possession. But it is not like that of captive's property as there in the case of captive's property. The one working the field is diligent and he profits from the produce he takes. While here one appraises their work as one would appraise the work of a sharecropper. The Gemara asks, and what is different in this case from that which we learned in the, in a Mishnah in 79b in the case of one who outlays expenditures to enhance his wife's use of property which belongs to his wife but whose profits are his for the duration of their marriage if the marriage ends in divorce or his death and she reclaims the property whether he spent much to enhance the property and it consumed little and did not derive benefit commensurate with his investment or whether he spent little and consumed much the principle is what he spent he spent what he consumed he consumed his labor is not appraised like that of a sharecropper the Gemara answer is this case is comparable only to that which we learned in a statement that Rabbi Yaakov said 
that Rabbi Chizda said, the legal status of one who outlays expenditures to enhance the use of Rock's property of his minor wife, whose father died and whose brother and mother married her off, is like that of one who outlays expenditures to enhance the property of another. And this is a marriage by rabbinic law, and she can, she can void the marriage by performing refusal. If the husband spent much to enhance the property and consumed little, his work is assessed like that of a sharecropper. Apparently, since he does not rely on the fact that her property will remain his, the sage is instituted on his behalf that he be reimbursed for his expenditures so that he will not devalue the property. Here, too, the sage is instituted on behalf of the one who labored in the field, that he be reimbursed for his labor, so that he will not devalue the property. The Gemara asks with regard to the phrase written in the Praita, and for all of them, the court appraises their work, as one would appraise the work of a sharecropper. What additional case does it serve to include, as apparently it applies only to property of, whose, of those who abandon it? In accordance with the opinion of Rabban Shimon ben Gamaliel, the Gemara answers, it comes to include that which Rabbi Nachman says that Shmuel says, for a captive who was taken captive, the court authorizes the relative to descend and manage his property. If he left of his own volition, the court does not authorize a relative to descend and manage his property. And Rav Nachman says his own statement. The legal status of one who flees is like that of a captive. The Gemara asks, one who flees, for what reason? If we say that he flees due to tax, it's called karga, that he attempts to evade, that is the case of one who left of his own volition. Rather, the reference is to one who flees due to an allegation that he committed murder and flees to avoid execution. Therefore, his legal status is that of a captive. Rabbi Yehuda says that Shmuel says, in the case of a captive who was taken captive and left in, the, and left in his field standing grain to be reaped, or grapes to be harvested, or dates to be cut, or olives to be picked, the owner of the produce will incur significant loss if they are not harvested. The court descends to his property and appoints a steward to manage his property, and he reaps and harvests and cuts and picks, and therefore, and thereafter, the court authorizes a relative to descend and manage his property. The Gomorrah asks, if that is an option, let the court always appoint a steward to manage the captive's field. The Gomorrah answers, we do not appoint a steward for the bearded meaning adults. A steward is appointed only for orphans. Rav Huna says, The court does not authorize a minor, even if he is an heir, to descend to the property of a captive. And the court does not authorize a relative who is an heir to descend to the property of a minor. That has no one to tend to it. And the court does not authorize a relative due to a relative to descend to the property of a minor. The Gemara elaborates, the court does not authorize a minor to descend to the property of a captive lest he devalue the property. And the court does not authorize a relative due to a relative to descend to the property of a minor. The Gemara explains it is a case where the minor has a paternal half-brother and that brother has a maternal half-brother. The concern is that the latter, who is not 
at all related to the miner who owns the field, will claim that he inherited the field from his brother, and the court does not authorize a relative to descend to the property of a miner. The concern is that since the miner does not protest at the appropriate time and assert that the property does not belong to his relative, that relative will come to assume presumptive ownership of the field. Rav said, learn from the statement of Rav Huna that one cannot assume presumptive ownership of the property of a miner. Even if one took possession of and used the property of a miner for three years, this does not indicate that he has presumptive ownership of the property. Rav Huna restricted the descent specifically of relatives to the property of a miner, indicating that those are not concerns when it is a non-relative who descends to manage the field. Apparently, the reason that there is no concern is that one cannot assume presumptive ownership of the property of a miner.